What's going on guys? Welcome to T3G. My name is Full Throttle and today we're doing a case swap. Yes, another one. Only this time around we're doing it a little bit differently. Now normally when we do case swaps you'll see a little montage with music playing in the background of us transferring the parts from the old system over to the new one. We're going to change it up a little bit. You'll still see a little bit of a montage but mostly we're going to be talking about why we're putting in parts certain ways and how to do certain things beforehand just to help you guys out. Uh, later on if you do this yourself. Now what we're doing today is this is uh, Cerebro's uh, basically kind of a backup computer slash server computer and we just were not fans of how the hard drives are set up uh, pointing towards the motherboard and it's just as you can see it's really cluttered there's no cable management whatsoever there's no good airflow going through it so we figure we help the computer out by taking it over to a new case so we're going from a AeroCool Aerocool? Yeah. Aerocool PGS V Spoiler Edition. And we're taking it over to the Deep Cool Tesseract uh, Blue Edition with the uh, side window. Uh, and uh, yeah, we're just going to go ahead and go from here and uh, see how everything turns out. All right, guys, so before we start tearing things down, uh, you know, we do need obviously certain tools. And it's overall, usually, it's fairly basic. Normally, you're just going to need a Phillips screwdriver and you're good to go. But just in case, you never know what you might come into. Uh, you know, some cases have different setups, so you might need a little more. So we do have a small tool kit here with different kinds of uh, screwdriver bits and stuff like that. Just in case if we need those. Uh, we do have a pliers, uh, just in case, once again, if we got to pull something out that we just can't do it with anything else. And then, of course, your cleaning methods. Now, when you're swapping cases, a lot of times, you're, most likely, your old parts are going to have some kind of dust on it. Maybe your CPU cooler, uh, the fans, the filters. Um, whatever it is, any kind of the parts that you might want to reuse or you're going to have to swap over to the new case, you want to go ahead and get rid of that dust. So you have a few options. Uh, one of the most simpler options that you can just get uh, from any store really, I, I think even Walmart carries them. Actually, I'm certain Walmart carries them because I bought it from Walmart. <laughs> is uh, is basically your canned air. Um, you can, you'll go through a few of these trying to clean out a full tower. Um, well, any kind of tower really, but fully cleaning it out, you'll go through a few of these and plus you gotta wait. The compressed air gets really pressurized and so at some point you just cannot use it anymore until it settles down and it takes a while so you might have multiple cans. But this is one way. The other way of course, this is my uh, portable air compressor here. Um, this is probably the best way in my opinion. Uh, I believe actually we would all three guys would probably agree with this. Absolutely, I, I prefer that one because it has more power. Yes, more power plus you know the only thing you have to wait for is the air to pressure you know build back up. Otherwise you know you're good to go with this. There's no, not really much waiting. Um, these are available obviously if you're looking to have something permanent in your home and you're looking to spend a little bit of money, you know you can get them anywhere. I believe this this so, small one probably went for. 50 bucks maybe and then I have a bigger one that's I believe a 20 gallon that's sitting in my garage and that was 250 so depending where you know if you have a price range uh, I'm also a car guy so I use it for other means but this is definitely something that's going to be in handy and especially if you're a computer person like us you're going to want to keep your computers clean because that helps with airflow that helps with you know maintaining heat and so by you know making sure that heat is maintained your parts are going to last longer so you definitely want to maybe look into investing this the other way not the most ideal way is of course a vacuum you can always vacuum out the dust especially if it's in big lumps uh, you can definitely vacuum it out it doesn't work great obviously because certain sections of the build are not easy to get to with the vacuum hoses so it's an option it's not the best option but it's definitely if it's something that you can you know you don't have money to spend on uh, you know you most likely have a vacuum in your home so you can definitely go this route so that's possibly what you're going to be looking for uh, now we're going to go ahead and start tearing apart this system and then we'll once all that's tear apart we're going to go ahead and start putting it in here and once again we're going to explain every everything why we're doing it in this way or certain reasons so like I mentioned we're going to go ahead and start tearing this apart now it if you've seen any of our other videos, we've talked about screwdrivers and magnetic screwdrivers. You can go ahead and use a magnetic screwdriver. It doesn't not, does not have enough um, power to damage any kind of components on your system. So if you ever hear somebody tell you, oh, don't use it because you might you know, mess up your board or you might mess up the RAM or maybe the hard drives, it's not possible. The thing on these is not powerful enough for them to damage it. Now, using any kind of sharper material like a screwdriver and you scratch the board, 
that might cause issues where your system doesn't work anymore. So be very, very careful when you're going for screws that are, you know, holding the board down because you don't want to nick the board in any way. So be careful on that part. But yeah, we're going to be using a standard uh, Phillips magnetic screwdriver to help us making sure that those uh, screws don't fall out or, you know, we're easily able to uh, retain them on the screwdriver while we're taking it out. Uh, we're going to go ahead now with this case, it's a little different. Normally I do certain things differently. I'll un start unplugging stuff and start ripping it apart. Uh, with this case, the way it's set up, especially the hard drives, we're going to definitely go with the hard drives first. Uh, just because the way they're facing, they're in the way of everything else. Uh, so we want to go ahead and get the hard drives out and this hot swap bays out as well because it's just going to give us more room to get to the graphics card, get to the motherboard screws. So we're going to do that first and then we'll go from there. Yeah. Alright, so the next part that we're going to do is we're going to go ahead, since it's already unplugged from the power, we're going to go ahead and remove the graphics card. Uh, and then actually while we're here, I'll go ahead and say what else we're going to do. I'm going to remove the graphics card. I'm going to go ahead and do this other PCI USB, additional USB ports here. And then I'm also going to remove the power supply. Then once we get all that done, we're going to go ahead and go for the motherboard. Uh, we're going to keep everything that's on the motherboard on the motherboard. So that means the RAM is going to stay there. That means the CPU cooler is going to stay there. So that stuff's not going to come off separately. You shouldn't remove that stuff when you're doing a swap. You just need to take it out all together and put it in there. Now, stuff like the graphics card or anything that's in the way of the actual motherboard, that you will have to remove, but the RAM and the CPU, you keep that on. Yeah, the big thing is going to be because we're keeping on such a large case fan, I mean the CPU fan, yeah. uh, we're gonna be we're gonna need that toolkit because we're gonna need that extension because it's gonna be we got we got big man hands so yeah, right. <laughs> we're, we're, we can't get in in that little space behind there so oh, get some screws. Absolutely, certain things just come in handy.
So now we got the motherboard unscrewed um, and you might see Cerebro setting up. I don't know if you're going to catch him on camera, but he's setting up the other camera so we can get some better shots. Um, but basically sometimes you won't be able to actually reach down there and get to the board. And so what you want to make sure you do is you can use, depending on your CPU cooler, you can actually use the cooler. But be very, very careful. Don't just yank on it. Be very gentle. I can see that everything's unplugged. The fan is unplugged because it was plugged into the board. So everything's unplugged. Looks like everything's good to go. Uh, so just very slowly, we're going to take this out. Nope, nope, just a built-in uh, standoff. And there it is, so yeah, it's good to go. Now I do want to mention, uh, this out of the way. Now I do want to mention before you get rid of this case, there's a few things that you can definitely use off of it. You know, we're gonna reuse the fans because the deep cool case only came with two fans, one in the front and one in the back. So we're gonna be reusing the back case, uh, fan from here. Now we don't have to use it as a back fan, we can put it on the side panel, we can put it at the top, however we want. And there is one more fan up here at the top that we're going to reuse as well. So I'm going to take that off and we're going to reuse, the, uh, reuse that. So make sure that you get everything you possibly can, especially if you're not reusing this case anymore and you're just tossing it, which we are, because this case basically just, it's no good to anybody to be honest. It's just not a very well designed case, it's an old case. Uh, also as well, before you do toss anything, always remember to grab the I.O. shield for your motherboard because if you leave it on this case and you toss it, that's going to be a problem. So make sure you get that as well. Um, so yeah, let's get these fans. I'm so in love with you. Now another thing that me and uh, Cerebro's hand here like to do is we, we take off the uh, front panel or top panel, whatever you want to call it, the hubs for the USB ports or the you know microphone or headphone jack, because you never know, I mean sometimes you might do a custom build and they might come in handy. Uh, you know, this is all 2.0 stuff, so you might not, uh, you know, at, depending when you're setting it up, you might want 3.0 at that time. but still good to keep it around just in case uh, you know you need to swap it out for somebody or whatever it is this way this I way. like having them on hand because I, I want to I want to not necessarily build a case but I want to build a custom yeah. custom kind of break. absolutely I mean listen this thing can come in handy for a lot of things repairs swaps case builds whatever you really want to do you can use it for so and that's it that's the case so we're gonna toss this case now you can definitely recycle it depending where you're located. Oh, that's good. We will be recycling it. Right. Um, if you don't have a recycling place near you, you know, see if there is one around your area. If not, then unfortunately the only thing at that point is you're just going to have to toss it. But um, yeah, almost every electronics store or store that sells electronics or computer parts has a recycling section i know staples does i know best buy does fries does yeah so um almost anybody anybody worth worth their worth their their image is gonna have a uh a recycling these, section we? Uh, uh, hold on to them yeah, guess we go. uh but yeah you know like you mentioned staples definitely staples because we've we've done it at staples uh you can do that we actually i have one that's near my house that's a specifically just a recycling place that you can just Go in there, drop a box of electronics or metals there, and just walk away, and they handle it from there. So, uh, you know, if you just make sure to always try to recycle because the more we recycle, the better. Uh, let me get the. Do you have the side panels? Yeah. We're all set on that. All right, so that's everything out of the case. Um, 
you guys probably didn't see it because we did a little bit of a montage, but uh, Cerebro was cleaning out the graphics card. This is a old 260 uh, GTX. Yeah, two, uh, yeah, yeah, 260 GTX from MSI. It's 11 inch card, so we're going to see how well that sits in our deep cool. That will have a review, by the way, here coming from Cerebro. Um, you know, we're using a standard size modular, uh, semi modular power supply. Um, we're going to be reusing the fans and basically we're just going to go ahead and do the next. Now, always make sure, like I mentioned in the beginning, clean your parts. You know, the graphics card needed a little bit better cleaning. I mean, we already cleaned it in advance, uh, but obviously there's not every, you're not going to be able to get certain things while everything's in the case. So while it's out of the case, go ahead and make sure it gets done. We're going to do it on this CPU cooler as well. And before we do do that, actually, now this motherboard, we didn't, we didn't do this build. So this was actually something that Full Throttle, or Full Throttle, me, <laughs> Cerebro received. And what I noticed is the person that built this left the plastics on the heat sinks. Now, if you're new to building computers, these heat sinks, they do get hot. Um, not extremely hot, but hot enough to the point where you probably don't want to have plastic on it. So if you see any plastics on your motherboard that you just purchased, go ahead and take them off the heat sinks. Uh, um, that's my apologies, I said plastics. I don't mean actual plastic items, I mean like plastic, uh, what would you call these, covers, um, tapes. Yeah, clear, yeah, clear tape. Clear tape. So make sure you remove that, yeah, be careful. This is my little thing and my little piece of advice for you guys. If you are a smoker, this is what your what your CPU fan is going to look like, or your CPU cooler, and this is what the fan is going to look like. Are you able to see it? Like, this is supposed to be black. Like, it's black on this side. You know, this is black on this side, it is not black on this side. Right? So, keep your stuff clean especially if you're a smoker, as often as possible. Um, 
sweeter. As I was saying again, uh, while Cerebro is fixing this cooler issue here for the CPU cooler, basically the first thing is first, what you're going to want to do is you want to put in your standoffs for the right motherboard. So each motherboard is going to use different standoffs. And let's see if we can show it to this camera. So for us, it's the top three, the middle three, and the bottom three. That's your standard. Uh, then you have your uh, mini ATX. Uh, each one does a little differently. Um, so that's basically what that is. Now this case only does standard, and luckily our board is a standard size board, so we're good to go on that part. Um, you want to make sure that everything's out of the way, so there's no cables or anything like that. Um, so that way you can just kind of fit the motherboard in. Now, of course, before you do go off and start putting the board in, make sure that your uh, I.O. shield is on there. Because if it's not, it's going to look, look weird. Uh, and make sure it's on there the right way, because if it's upside down, then the board won't fit in there. So you want to make sure that it's set properly for us. It's the keyboard and mouse for the PS2 connections are going to be at the top. Now, most motherboards, newer motherboards, most of the time you won't see that connection anymore. It will be USB. Uh, you might or or you might see one of those connections still available to this day, but usually it's USB. But just make sure you put it in there right. And make sure to pop it in. Now there's gonna be a little bit of force you gotta put or put you gotta use, should I say. To pop that in sometimes sometimes they go real easily in. sometimes you do need a little bit of force just listen to that little pop uh, to make sure that IO shield is on there once that's on there then we're gonna go ahead and put the board in but we're gonna go ahead and wait on Cerebro here and then we'll go from there So we're going to add, while it's not uh, in the board or in the in the case yet, we're going to add memory to this board. Um, it does already have, I believe, 6 gigs. We want to go ahead and upgrade that real quick since it is a, you know, it is a unit that we're going to be using. Uh, so we're going to add, uh, what, 6 more? Yeah. So we're going to go to 12 gigs. Um, it, this one has 6 total. Uh, RAM slots this particular board most boards either have uh, Four or unless you're doing the 2011 socket on the most recent ones from Intel. They have eight uh, RAM slots, so depending on the board you're using uh, Yeah, it's going to depend on that, but mo most of the times you're going to see four RAM slots. So that's on there Good to go. So I didn't need to really move that out of the way and make sure you do any upgrades that you want to do right off the bat to RAM or CPU if you're if you're working with let's say a stock cooler and you want to put a new one like this go ahead and do it outside the case because it's going to be a lot easier for you uh, luckily this case does have a big CPU cutout but nonetheless it's still easier to do it outside the case once again I am using the uh, cooler to hold the motherboard up which is not a problem make sure when you bring the board down do not put it down on the standoffs and move it around. You're going to scratch the back of the board and that's going to most likely kill your board. You don't want to do that. You want to kind of hover over the standoffs and move it in. Um, also, when you're screwing down the motherboard, do not screw down with force. Okay, It's not necessary. Now you want it on there pretty tight, but not with anything that's fierce force to almost where you're stripping. It doesn't need to be that tight. It just doesn't want to be loose and make sure they're all equally tightened because if one's tightened more than the other there might be grounding issues to the board so you want to make sure those are also tightened on there very well. So even though we did even though we did take out the hard drives first in uh, in the teardown of the old one uh, the new one we are putting 
putting them in probably in last. Uh, why? Because it's just how it works for this particular. It usually, when you're how can I put this? Usually when you're building a computer, you always want to put the board in first. Then you do the power supply, you route the wires to the back, and then you put the other things like the optical and the hard drive and the graphics cards. Uh, like I said, I always go with the hard drive. Um, hard drive is usually second to last. I probably will do the graphics card last, depending where it's sitting, if it's sitting above the SATA ports. Uh, but we'll go into that a little more, but let's go ahead and get this board in there. I always do the middle one first. So in the board you have your top, middle, and then bottom. I do the middle, middle. I put that one in first, make sure all the holes are aligned. Now I don't tighten it all the way right away. This is just basically to kind of hold the board and uh, basically align with the other holes so that way I can get the other screws in easily. But once they are the rest of them are in, then I make sure this one's fully tightened. Now once again, you don't need a lot of force to tighten these guys. Uh, you don't want to mess up the board, so make sure you don't put too much force in tightening these. did not mention guys um, and there's quite a few ways to do this actually Linus went over on his tech quickie so if you guys want to go check him out but make sure that you're ground yourself before working on this if you have carpet in your home or somewhere that you might get a lot of static electricity and you know that anytime you go for like a doorknob you get zapped make sure that you're grounded so there's uh, wristbands that you actually can get uh, that you can either put around your wrist or around your ankle and plug it into a metal object or not plug it in but hook it to a metal object and that'll uh, get you grounded so you don't have to worry about it or what you can do is this kind of what Linus went over you can actually plug this in now you keep it off but you plug in the power cord to the wall and you can keep touching this once in a while to um, basically garn yourself to the power supply so you can go that route as well you don't have to you want to make sure that the switch is on the off but uh, yeah so you can use that as well um, that's a few ways you can do it but once again like I said he went over it in detail on his channel so if you guys want to check him out never mind that we're not doing any of those things uh, I mean I'm paying attention like I'm making sure I'm touching metal stuff before I yeah. touch the motherboard because you don't want to you don't want to shop the board or any anything that has a board so like the graphics card the motherboard if you do shop it from the static electricity you're most likely going to fry the board and um, yeah basically that's it you're going to have to pick up a new one so we have one last screw and it's in the worst part. screwdrivers that's what I'm talking about guys Did you flip that LCD over all right so they're all in there tight it's not coming out we're good so the next part I'm gonna do the power supply that's always my next part that I toss in so that way I can route the wires where I want to and then we go from there getting other things connected and set up uh, like I said I do the hard drives and the graphics card towards the end just because that allows me to work with the SATA ports and the connections uh, from the top IOs. Now, some people don't use the top IO, and that's perfectly fine if that's you know what you like. But I personally, depending on if you're how that my, kind of person, if you're that kind of person, uh, but my tower um, always sits in a direction where I actually can't get to the back easily, so I utilize the top ports a lot. Uh, now I do have extensions and stuff like that from the back ports, just so that way I can 
get to them easily like I have uh, extended USB 3.0 so I can use the one in the back uh, if the one you know most of my actually current cases don't even have a front 3.0 that can use it <laughs> so now how do you want it now this is a preference thing guys depending on how much so there's positive and negative pressure for air cooling and depending how many fans you have and how many are actually blowing air into the case and how many are blowing out is probably how you're going to base off on how you want to uh, position this uh, PSU fan because the PSU fans they're technically intakes um, so what that means is they take in air towards the PSU and then they come out from the back here so you can position it where the fan is up uh, and facing in the case where it takes air from the case and vents it out so technically as an exhaust or you can put it from the bottom where it's getting fresh air from the bottom and it's basically cooling itself and uh, exhausting towards the back now lately I've been uh, doing it where I'm posting the fans like this just depending on how many exhaust fans I have uh, so basically the fan is inside the case and it's exhausting the hot air out um, so that's what I've been doing lately I have in the past preferred it being down so that way the PSU is getting some own fresh air, um, but I mean it really doesn't matter. Just you want to make sure that you're just paying attention and seeing uh, which. Wow, well, I kind of stopped in the middle. There's a rubber band. So it's probably well, it's probably from the cable on the inside. Um, so it really just depends how many fans you have uh, going which way. Uh, I think let's see here. We have one in the front, right? We're probably going to put. I would say, oh well, we've no, got we two can. from the top. We got two from the top, but are we going to intake or exhaust? Exhaust. I always, you know, I always go up. Well, that's the thing though. The side one, one of them is not going to be able to fit because this thing's going to be right. Up that's fine. That's not going to be able to do. That's just more cooling for the cooler right. then. So we have only cool. one intake from here, one intake by the GPU. You don't want to make like this one an intake so that it's kind of going down and then through the through the CPU. The and CPU's, then out. CPU's pointing that way. Right. Because I mean if we got this one and this one is exhaust, then we can make this one an intake. This will be it. This will be the first time I'm doing top intake. Well, remember I and said I still I have said, reservations about it. I'm not gonna lie, guys. We were at um, I want to say at Fries, yeah, Fries, and they had the uh, top cooler that was uh, uh, it was a H100 radiator yeah. for liquid cooling, but they had it as an intake. Mm. And I was like, why would they do that? And then you were like, well, I mean, if they have this and this is exhaust, and I was like, yeah, you're right. Sure. See, see, see. They do have exhaust, yeah. So I would say, let's make the tops intakes and we'll make this an exhaust. Now guys, None of these screws have to be extremely tight. I hope you guys understand that. Um, over tightening screws can possibly damage certain things, so they need to be on there, you know, fair tightness, but it doesn't have to be so extreme to the point where you got to use so much force to take it back out. So that's not necessary in any way. So make sure when you're tightening these, don't over tighten them, especially those motherboard screws. I think a lot of people mess that up. Now guys, I did mess up on this, I'm not going to lie, I would recommend 
possibly if you're dealing with the custom CPU cooler that like the one that we have in here that's a big size now I got lucky and I was able to slide this fan in there but you probably want to put that fan in there before you put the uh, motherboard with the CPU cooler on there because you might have some Just issues do that. You might have some issues with actually getting it on there. And uh, a lot of times people will, you know, there's a debate on how many screws, if you need all four, or if you can just use two. We're gonna use two screws for the top fans for, they're gonna be going diagonal from each other. Uh, and honestly, as long as they're fairly tight on there, there should be no vibration that's gonna cause them to create any kind of sound. So they, once they're on there and they're tight, we're good to go. Yeah, the only thing that's causing any kind of noise is the filter. Oh, that's even nicer. Now this way, the filter actually does what it's supposed to do. Right. Never understood a filter going out. See? See? How you're gonna connect everything that's up to you what you want to do first I'm doing I start doing the. I'm kind of all over the place I start doing the hard drives now I'm doing the like the IO stuff for the front uh, for the indicator and for the power um, so I'm doing that next and then I'll finish up the hard drives um, and then we'll kind of go from there I think Cerebro is gonna take over uh, for actually cable managing this case because I think this is one of those cases where I'm gonna lose my mind if I do it so we're going to have him do it, but I'm going to go ahead and finish up connecting everything and then we'll go from there. Swap out. Trade. We're switching.
definitely want to make sure that the uh, case is down when we're putting in any kind of large components. Um, you know, it's visible here, maybe. I ran the, the eight pin through the middle of the case here. Um, that's not an ideal option, um, but the way I'm going to be putting in the the graphics card, it's going to kind of hold it down and uh, obviously because the computer's not a lot of motion or anything like that. Uh, the main thing you want to make sure is when you do run cables through the, the board area that it's not pressing on anything, that it's not shoving anything out of the way, um, just basically so that everything's still meant working the way it's meant to work. Case and screws. Uh, as much as you don't want to have pressure on the board screws, um, when I attach graphics cards to the actual case, I always make sure that's definitely on there. Um, you know, if you, if you gotta give a little oomph to it, that's fine, uh, because you want to take as much pressure off the board itself as possible. Um, ideally, the case is holding the board up or the graphics card up, not the board. This is again going back to the to $35 case. One of the holes wasn't punched out all the way. That'll happen. I can't say that doesn't happen with more expensive cases, but rare. All right, guys, here it is. Uh, fully, fully built up. Uh, we've got the back on here already. I've uh, got the front plugged in. It is a bit kind of tricky. We've got the, the four pin. Um, it is a mid tower uh, with a lot of large components, so we kind of had to maneuver things. So we do have that power line from the, the fan on the side panel going straight to one of the, the onboard headers. Uh, everything works. We've got it plugged in. We've had it plugged in already, um, so everything is good to go there. And let's see if I can put this on backwards. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's it's solid. Uh, it's overall it looks good and. Uh, I think it'll serve me pretty well. I know, I know the, the RAID's already working, we had to scrap one drive, um, but otherwise we've got the solid state install and it boots up pretty quickly. So, I mean, i7 quad core with the, the hyper threading, so I've got, you know, eight cores, pretty solid. Thanks for watching. Make sure you guys like, subscribe, and check out t3dtech.com for more tech adventures. Um, we're gonna see Watsky this weekend, so, peace out. I know it's a little weird because I started the video, but he's ending it. See you guys.